from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster who, uh, like, like, I forgot what I was going to say, but I, now I know. this. It's time for the podcast that's here to help you feel less alone in the deep, dark night, to take your mind off of stuff, to, to be very silly in a second, and to go off topic. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And this is a special uh, crossover episode uh, with my friends over at Alba Salix, Royal Physician. So if you want to hear the original version of this podcast, uh, the link to it is going to be in the show notes, or you could search A-L-B-A-S-A-L-I-X, Alba Salix, in your podcast app of choice. And here's a couple of ways we're able to keep this podcast free for everybody. Thanks. Hey, everybody, Scoots here. This is a, uh, like, the start. This is episode one of a crossover uh, with Albus, the podcast Albus Salix. And I've got great news. We've been working on this for years now. And it's only because of people that are willing to support the show directly or support our sponsors that we're able to do something really cool, which is we're going to do an entire season uh, and then also season two and season three in the future of a crossover with Albus Salix where we're able to compensate uh, Alba Salix for using their content and give like uh, you the opportunity not just to check out uh, one audio fiction podcast, but you check out more once you get going listening to Alba Salix during the day. Hopefully you'll discover more and more of the joys of listening to audio fiction. So yeah, thanks everybody who supports the show on Sleep With Me Plus or supports the sponsors or does anything else to support the podcast because this is what you make possible. Uh, that Sleep With Me continues, continues to be able to put people to sleep, is able to support other creative people in a small way, and is able to try to find new ways uh, to kind of say, what what is uh, a sleep podcast bedtime story for grownups in the deep dark night? So thank you so much. And here's uh, past Scoots. Uh, take it away, Scoots. All right, but Scoots here, and this is where I talk about, like, supporting the show. So this is really only for regular listeners. If you count on Sleep With Me or you use Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you're a long-term listener. Like, does Sleep With Me do anything unique for you, right? Is it a part of your life and it's a unique way? Like, when you just discovered the show or it started helping you, you're like, wow, I had no idea this existed, but I was looking for it. And then does it provide something for you? Is it unique and does it provide something? Does it do anything for you? Like, does it help you fall asleep or take your mind off of stuff so you could fall asleep? Or does it keep you company? Does it distract you during the day? So is it unique or somewhat unique? And does it do anything for you? If the answer is yes to the both of those, like how much is that, does that, is that worth anything to you? How much is, are those things, the unique part and whatever it does for you, worth to you? But the other question is like, if sleep with me went away, like what would you be willing, like would that change what it's worth to you? Would it be, would it change the value proposition? To, uh, it's a, but I've, to get it back, oh yeah, I'd pay, I'd pay 50 bucks a month and you don't even have a tier at that level. So just think about that. But it, it, if, 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 if any of that resonates with you, don't wait. Uh, uh, we really are in a position now where for at least a, a time I'm going to have to kind of, uh, Really work hard to get more people involved in supporting the show. We have the listeners. It's just uh, getting the attention of enough listeners, a small percentage of people. Um, uh, but people that are said, oh, okay, I'll do it now. You just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus and sign up, uh, support the show. Even if you're not sure, sign up for they're all, all the trials are seven days and then you could change your mind. But at least then you've done something. You said, yes, it's unique. Yes, it really means something to me. Yes, it does something for me. And no, I don't want to wait. Like, uh, I don't want it to go away. Um, so thanks. Uh, think about that. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. All right, buddy. This is Scoots. This is the Sleepy Supporter Zone. I'm trying to do a sped up version of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, but I just need you to pay attention. If you're listening to this ad supported version of the show, our sponsors are direct response, meaning they base their support of the show on uh, how many listeners uh, not just hear these commercials, but actually like listen and say, hey, oh, let me sign up for that free trial. Let me take that free 
test. Let me check this sponsor out. So that's why I do take the time to thank people. Susie got new insurance. You might have already heard me thank Susie, uh, but it's really important. Susie got a new new insurance, uh, was trying to find new health care providers, used our ZocDoc link, used the ZocDoc app, ZocDoc.com slash sleep, found all of Susie's new providers using that app and let me know about it. Let the sponsor know about it. It's huge. It, it is huge. Like tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of people will be listening right tonight, right now because of Susie. Uh, they can't can't afford to support the show directly. So thank you, Susie. If you want to be like Susie, uh, support a sponsor, even a free service like ZocDoc, let them know about it. Let me know about it. Use that form at sleepmemorypodcast.com slash sponsors. And once again, thank you, Susie. That's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is getting the support you need. There's links to resources in the show notes. You can use those links right now, including international resources. It's also about being a part of positive change, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying things, but learning more, taking action. There's links where you could do that in the show notes or and or. I mean, you could go out there in the world and, and, and engage the world however you want for positive change. Or you could join us uh, right now. We're supporting the Trevor Project, the Midnight Mission, and Hand in Hand. You could join us in supporting those organizations, or you could take action in your own, wherever you want. Uh, be a part of positive change. Let me know about it or, you know, share it on social media, uh, how you're engaging positively with the world or your communities uh, that you're a part of. Uh, so thank you, uh, everybody that participates in that. And uh, that's it. Miss Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster some Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes too. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bart. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story, yeah. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me is sleep phones. You could get them with the five bucks off. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Use Sleep With Me at checkout. And you can get those Sleep With Me branded versions with different sayings from the show. Uh, and now what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, uh, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, you know, things on your mind you're thinking about uh, in the past or present or future. Uh, feelings, like any emotions coming up for you, whether they're related to thoughts or they're just there, or they're around, you know, you see they're drifting in and out, that happens to me. Uh, physical sensations, it could be uh, changes in routine or, what, you know, whatever it is, it's not easy sleeping uh, for a lot of us. So whether it's something uh, like external or internal or you're not sure like me I'm usually baffled when I can't sleep like it is very rare that I can just put it on one thing and if I could I would like other than having too many uh, cups of coffee which I normally am pretty good about well not about I have too many cups but I stop drinking them at like 11 also here's a here's a well we'll get into pro tips later but uh like uh, if you're gonna have too many cups of coffee you, you know Use the same cup, but, like, don't try to have too many cups of coffee at the same time. Learn from my mistakes. And also don't walk around your apartment carrying too many cups of coffee because I just, uh, I've tested these things out so you don't need to. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do here, like I said, I'm going to try to create a safe place and send it your way or invite you in, which is whichever is more comfortable for you. I'm going to be like a, a, a friend near your bedside in your general vicinity. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'll use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Pointless meanders. Oh boy, or my, you see, does he he meanders without, and he never gets to a point. And I say, thank you so much for the kind words. Thanks for getting me. Uh, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, extra, so many extra words or sounds. There are more sounds than words. Utterances. I don't. Have I ever used utterances in there? It makes me want to make jokes about utters, but I know I did that in the last two or three hundred episodes. I talked about. So I've probably been a hundred episodes. Maybe it was like two episodes ago that I talked about my fake resume, and that I started an ice cream business business called Utter Delight, and then I thought, well, maybe to be a vegan ice cream business, right? Or did I think about that the last time I brought it up, or was that just in my regular thinking? Was that when I was professionally meandering, or just my normal day-to-day hobbyist meandering? But that would be the thing. You say, well, this ice cream is utter delight, uh, because the udders are delighted, because they don't, they don't, like, uh, they don't have to deal, like, it's, you get it, right? It's, uh, Whatever, it's not not milk-based ice cream. And you say, we got it, Scoots. The first time you said it. And you could it could be cream-based, and you say, well, it's delightful. It's utterly delightful. And I say, well, thanks for listening to my utterances about utters. Uh, or like utter uh, uh, businesses using the term utter didn't work out. It was just a fake resume anyway. So... Oh, so if you're new, holy, you, I may have thrown you off. I'm the type of person, that, you know, a hobbyist a meanderer and uh, it thinks it's funny to make fake resumes, which I still think is funny, even though I've, I don't, I wouldn't know the structure of resume now. It's been a while since I spun up the old fake resume. You, you, they, uh, maybe that could be an episode one day. So I think I probably did one about that. Um... Okay, so where was I? If you're new, it went off topic early. Went off to I'll be I'll be going off topic again. Won't be long, because I already had something I had talked about and then I forgot about minutes ago. Before utterances came up, didn't I say another thing that I don't know? But so I'm glad you're here. I'm here to keep you company as you fall asleep. So a couple of things to know if you're new. If you're skeptical or doubtful or ambivalent or like feeling a little uh angst that's totally understandable this podcast one not for everybody two very different uh three extra strange and very odd so i'm going to give you some information but if so that's a totally you say what well, what is this thing i am not sure if i like it i say just like that's what we say at utter delight we say the first time you might may not, might not be sure, especially about our more obscure flavors. Like, uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of an obscure flavor that fits bedtime that you can't already get because now there's so many obscure ice cream flavors. Uh, maybe we would name ours in a pan. Like, uh, I was thinking of like, uh, like uh, I wanted to say something, something Pamplona. I don't know why I thought of that, but he'd say, the shades of Pamplona. You say, well, what does that even taste like? I say, well, like uh, what I feel like. Uh, well, I haven't been to Pamplona. I actually know nothing about it other than it sounds great on my mouth. And this ice cream will do, well, maybe that's, that's the way we do it, to say, well, I love saying Pamplona because it's just a nice word to say, Pamplona. You could say it while you're lying in bed, just uh, Pamplona. See, it's not Pamplona. Uh, and so that's what, but, oh, I'm talking to new listeners. Sorry about that. Uh, the rest of my parts of my brain that I was giving attention to. So if you're skeptical or doubtful, totally understandable. I mean, if someone says they're going to put you to sleep and then they start talking about fake resumes and vegan ice cream businesses and making utter related references, you say, I'm utterly confused with the two T's and not two D's. Your utterances are uh, utterly 
And I'd say, okay, that's fair enough. I, I get it. Uh, it's a very common reaction. In fact, most regular listeners say it takes two or three tries to get used to the show. But I also want to run through a few of the things that could throw you off if you're new. One, this is not a podcast to really be listened to. You can listen, but you could also barely listen or moderately listen or, or like listen to for a little while. And then, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a podcast you consume in a nearly passive way, not totally passive. Uh, like, a, like you'd say, this is like a passerby podcast. I don't, you see, well, I don't even know what that means. And I say, well, I'm trying to think of what it means. Give me a second. Uh, you say, well, yeah, like most podcasts, you're not a passerby. You're in there. It's in your ears. And uh, this one you could walk. Like so, if someone was playing like a guitar or mandolin or banjo or ukulele or ukulele or kazoo, uh, like out on their porch and you were walking by, like, a, I mean, it would be an awkward situation. You could stop and listen I mean, for me, it would be awkward because they say, well, do I have to make eye contact? Do I have to talk to the person? What, what would you, should you talk to someone while they're playing a musical instrument? Particularly kazoo, probably not. Did I make, do I make eye contact with them? And then you'd, you're committed to something when you stop and you're, you're actively engaged. This podcast, oh, no, 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 don't got to do that. None of that kind of pressure. You heard how I, I folded under that pressure. And maybe you could relate to that, you say. Yeah, I'm not emotionally equipped to, to deal with uh, buskers or people just playing music for joyful reasons. I mean, as long as it's at a distance, I'd be fine. But getting too close and having to interact with them, too much for me. I'll pass. I'd prefer to be a passerby and, like, listen, enjoy it as it comes, and enjoy it as it goes. So that's kind of how you consume sleep with me, maybe. So it's a podcast you don't need to listen to, but you can. And it's a podcast that really doesn't put you to sleep. It's one of the few po sleep podcasts uh, that claims it doesn't put you to sleep. It's more here to keep you company while you drift off. And that's the reason the episodes are about an hour, is I'm here to be your boar bay, your boar bud, your boar sib, your boar cousin, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your boar bra, whatever you want to call it. I'm here to be at your bedside talking and taking your mind off of stuff as you drift off, as we pass by, and then you kind of keep passing by into the arms of Morpheus. Uh, there's one more piece of that, that is if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to the very end. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to taking your mind off of stuff uh, the whole time. So I'll be here to the very end. So for those of you that can't sleep or need this podcast during the day, I'm here for you, okay? I want you to know that. So those are important things to know. If you're new, the other thing that can throw people off, I guess I always talk about this, but I don't think I can, like, I try to give you a heads up, but usually the people that throws off, there's not much they could do, is the show is very different structurally. It starts off with a greeting, then there's business, and believe it or not, it does take a lot to put the show out, work, and, and all that. So the business is what enables us to keep the podcast free here for you twice a week. But if you're new, really not important at all. Uh, and then there's an intro, which also throws a lot of people off. The intro is like somewhere around 12 to 20 minutes of me talking uh, about the podcast and kind of introducing it. And you say, well, can't you do that in a more straightforward, efficient way? And I'd say, you're thinking like somebody that plays like kazoo, you know, for an audience. Uh, this podcast is not meant to be consumed so much in that way. Plus, I don't know if I'd be good at getting, I don't know if I'm good at getting to the point. If I did, I'd have to get to the point cast, the podcast about points and pointillism and uh, pointed things. We cover it all. Counterpoints, points, you know, all those things. Uh, you say, is that really a show? Oh, yeah. So we talk about pointillism usually first, uh, then pointy stuff. Uh, you know, that's a kind of our potpourri section, even pointy potpourri. We actually, that's one of our sponsors. Pointing your way to good smells, pointy potpourri. It's pointy for people who like pointy stuff that smells good. Pointy potpourri. Uh, and then the last half of the show, we have, po you know, pointed things we talk about. and Or point, sometimes it's poignant, but it's always pointed here on the point, pointy cast. 
and then usually at the end we have a bonus thing about pointers, you know, dogs and, and also maybe, you know, famous moments of pointing in history. So I guess that show wasn't to the point either, but so you could see where I'm not good at that. But the real reason the intro is 12 to 18 minutes to 20 minutes is because I want to give you time to ease into bedtime. There's so much expectations or there's this idea that you just fall asleep. And for me and hundreds of thousands of listeners that I've interacted with, it, that just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And so I found the, the, the intro works to give you a nice long runway into sleep, whether you start listening as you're getting ready for bed or as you're in bed getting comfortable or as you need a break for during your day. Uh, the intro just kind of like slowly lowers the, the volume of the day. That's, I guess that's what I'm saying. So that's why I really I ramble for so long is to, 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 help, to help you drift away. And then I'll talk tonight. It'll be our crossover episode with Alba Salix, Royal Physician. So this will be really fun. Holy holly, uh, is it going to be a good time and very sleepy. So I'm excited about that. And then our show ends with some thank yous and good nights. So that's the structure of the show. Trying to think of what else. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. I mean, we make the show because I believe you do deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a safe place of respite and distraction where you could get comfortable and get some rest. Uh, like, I've had so many struggles with sleep and, you know, dreading bedtime. And I'd like to, to, to improve that for you if I can. I can't do it for everybody. I wish I could. Because if you get a good night's sleep, the world's going to be a better place. It's going to be like a little bit better for you and a little bit better for everybody else. So that's why I make the show is I believe in it and I believe in you getting some sleep. I believe in you not listening to me soon. Uh, either way, I mean, let's be honest, like either way, that's going to happen, right? Give it a few tries and see how it goes. And if you give it a few tries and it works good, you won't be listening to me in a good way. And if it doesn't work for you, hopefully we just you say, well, let me try some other stuff. I mean, there's a percentage of people that let me know how strongly they feel about it. But, but, you know, that's just you, being human and, you know, being tired. Why not? You know, some people get that Oscar-type feel. Oscar the Grouch, I mean. So I totally understand. It's, I was a bit cranky today, too. So you know, now I get to be here putting you to sleep, and, and I feel good. So I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I really work hard, and I strive to help you fall asleep. I appreciate you coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to keep this podcast uh, free for you and everybody else. Thanks. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive. Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Good morning, Millie. Good morning to you, Your Majesty. T. Yes, please. Beautiful day out today. The girls are off to the riding lesson. Yes, though it took a bit of doing, Wilhelmina's still unhappy they don't have unicorns. Well, Mummy and Daddy can't afford unicorns this year. Where is Gunther, anyway? His Majesty's still in bed, I think. <laughs> no, I'm just barely waking up. Uh, almost awake. I, I, almost. Uh. I swear, it must be something in the tonic Elba gave me for my... Is that the sound of our silent tea set crashing to the floor silently? Oh, my word, your majesty. Millie, that is the queen's favorite tea set of mine. The queen. You do better take care of... Look at what you've... Gunther! What is it, Barbell? What's the matter? Your hair, Gunther. What about my hair? I'm just barely... Is it still a bedhead or something? 
It's all yarn. Look in the mirror. Oh, for heaven's sake, get Alba in here. Ahem, 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 ahem. By appointment to the king and queen, Alba Salix, royal physician. Episode the first. Well met. Renaissance music is so nice to hear right now. You're hearing it in your mind. Uh, bubble, 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 toil and trouble. Let me look here. Plus uh, page 42. Oh, that's uh, 24. Grind and add seven leaves dried catnip. Is that per dose or the whole cauldron, I wonder? Oh, my door. Alba. Hi, Jerome. I was wondering if you could help me out. I'm a bit busy this afternoon. Oh, I understand. It won't take long. I'm just having a touch of the old rumor spreading again. You know, where I constantly spread rumors about people. I need a potion to put a stop to it. Mm-hmm. 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 I was wondering if there's anything you'd recommend for it. The copper bracelet's not working anymore? Nope, I tried copper rings and a copper neck brace too, but it's just not doing the trick. I was wondering if you had a potion for it, to, you know, to get me to stop spreading these rumors. I've got three orders to fill right now, Jerome. Not to hurry, I can wait. Clopity, 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 clop. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Can I help you? Yes, I must have seen someone about my back. You're in luck. Our visiting chiropractor, Balthig the teddy bear, is in today. Have, have, you, have you seen him before? No, I have not. All right, well, you'll need to fill out this patient information form. Certainly. Cloppity, 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 clop. Boy, a centaur. Don't get many of them around, eh? No, we don't. Tall fella he is. He certainly is. So, are you coming to the palace tonight? The palace? To see the show. The dancing monks are in town to for, 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 like they're doing all their dances and asto- they astonish people with all of their moves. Aerob- aerobatic dancing, break dancing. I don't even know what break dancing is, Alba. Not interested. Really don't need to see a bunch of bald dancing monks jumping around and, and break, breaking things or whatever break dancers do. But Alba, they break dance on cardboard. I don't know why. I think it's so it's smoother. And they're doing a great dance-off. They only perform it once publicly every eight years. Very exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Seen it before. Cloppity, 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 clop. Hold on, then. What's this about a consultation fee? I'm afraid chiropractic isn't covered for centaurs. Or centaurs or centaurs, uh, or whatever it is, uh, however you pronounce your name. Now, how is that fair? Uh, let me see. You've got twice the vertebrae and two rib cages. Oh, my word. I, my, for, for the love of, for the love of my tail. I don't set the prices. You'll have to take it up with Balthig. He's right through there. I believe I will. Cloppity, 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 door close. Now, where was I? Okay, one penny weight of powdered parchment leaf. Bring to a boil. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Oh, my door just opened once again. Elba, I have the hiccups. Do you really? They're terribly awful. I, 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 hiccup, 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 and make them stop. That's easy. Just stand on one foot. No, 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 the left one. That's it. Now give me your hand. Put out your pinky finger. Like that? Just like that. Good. Now hand me that uh, laundry laundry clip. What do they call those? Say, uh, how do I, what, where's my, where's my, uh, hand me that laundry pin. This, uh, hiccup, hiccup, this laundry pen, p- p- pin here. I called it a pen, Alba, Alba but it's a laundry pin. I, just, just hand it to me, thank you. Okay, now hold still and hold out your finger nice and tight. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. What is it? They're gone. The hiccups, they're all gone. Are they? Well, that's a relief. I guess we don't have to, it's, it's a clothespin. I just realized that was what it was called. Uh, you don't have to wear a clothespin on your finger for years now. Whew. But if you ever get bad hiccups again, you just come and talk to me, okay? 
Uh, okay. You're sure they're gone? Totally gone. Uh, uh, thanks, Alba. Don't mention it. Is that the, uh, the door? What's that noise in the room next door? Oh, my back. Oh, my word. Teddy bear, you can really give a back rub. Other side, please. Oh, that is a good, good back rub. That sure was lucky, wasn't it, Alba? Are you still here? If those hiccups hadn't stopped, she would have had to wear a laundry pin or a clothespin, which we realized it's called a clothespin, Alba, to hold up clothes. What clothes that are from the laundry? Yes, he would. Oh, teddy bear, holy, are you, uh, are you walking on your hands on my back, or is that your feet? It's so plush. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, I heard, and the day after that, I don't know how they tell. Do you know how they tell, being a uh, sorceress and all? Uh, Jerome, I'm supposed to cure all the ills of this kingdom here, and you're wasting my time. Oh, well. Well, anyway, about my rumor, rumorism, you know, my constant spreading of rumors. Yes, 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 you're right. Here, take this, drink a mouthful with every meal, and don't bug me anymore. Oh, well, thank you kindly. Is this going to work, or curing my ability to spread rumors, or my, you know, my, it's just something that springs up inside me, Alba. Alba. Absolutely. It'll get rid of your spreading of rumors, or your desire to. Now close the door behind you, please. Miss Alba Salix, His Majesty requests your presence at the palace. Oh, yeah? Tis a matter of some secrecy, he says, and most urgent. Ugh, now what? Tell him I'm on my way. Bye, Alba, thank you. Oh, the closest, please close the door behind, thank you. Oh, my back, oh, boy. All done. Thank you, Teddy Bear. Balthig. Thank you, Balthig, the Teddy Bear. Balthig. Thank you, Balthig. It's, my back feels so good. You pay now. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, very reasonable rates indeed. Here you go. Here's, uh, this is the sound of uh, us exchanging funds. Thank you. Remember stretching. Take care. Bye. Miss Alba Salix to see you, Majesty. Show her in. Hello, Alba. Hi, Gunther. Did you try out the new hair tonic I gave you? Yes, about that. What's the towel for? Washing your new hair, were you? Look. It's yarn. Look, I look like a raggedy Annie. Those dolls they used to give the children, Alba. Raggedy Annie of uh, Green Gables. So green, red, Persimmon? Is that a persimmon yarn in my hair? Where my hair would have been? Um, yes. Well, that's a lovely head of, um, yarn, Alba. I already covered it. It's tickling me. It's tickling the queen. It's making me sneeze. Well, uh, yeah. H how do you think that happened? Clearly a result of your tonic, Alba. Alba. Uh, clearly not. Clearly not. There's no way it could have caused anything like this. Alba, what am I supposed to do now? Well, the yarn look is very in now. They call it mupp, you know, muppet, muppet chic. I think is what they're calling it. Uh, it just like you look, you you look like a knockoff of the old Raggedy Annie of Green Gables or whatever. I will not live with yarn on my head. What if it tickles me and I sneeze on the queen or in front of my subjects? It's only yarn. It's, it's harmless. Parabelle won't come near me. I can't go out in public like this. I was going to go to the Dancing Monk show later and watch them this evening. They break dance on cardboard. Yes, sorry, your majesty. I'll see what I could do. It, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? I'd keep that towel on. You don't want your yarn to get dirty. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, shuffle ball step, shuffle ball change, whoa, 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 slow it down. Good work, brothers. Let's take a 15 before we rehearse the second half. Yes, Father. Father Lang, Father Lang, can I show you my windmill now? I think I can almost just spin on my head. Not now, Brother Magnus. But you promised to let me show you. I've been working hard. Magnus. 
Please, I want to be a, a, a dancing monk. With the, I want to learn how to break dance. I mean, I really already know how to do it. I just haven't been able, you haven't given me a chance to, to, to show my moves. I've told you before, you are young still, and you don't have the proper energy and attitude to pursue the art of dance. But I want to learn to pop and lock and do the slow motion robot. And that other thing where you jump over one of your legs when it looks like you're jumping over the other leg. And then the outer space walking where you're moving backwards. Please, Father Lang, you only prove my point. Okay, sorry, I renounce all worldly things. I promise to use my powers for good, and I don't have an ego and stuff. Can I be a dancing monk now? Magnus, your skills lie in other areas. You have it in you to be an excellent healer. Stupid healing. Can't you teach me, like, one... Just just teach me the pop. You don't have to teach me the lock. Like, that, you know, that one with the arm, just with the arms. Please, Father Lang. Uh, there's someone coming here. Uh, hush, boy. Miss Salix, uh, Miss Alba Salix, Miss Salix, excuse me, are you Miss Alba Salix? That's me. A pleasure. I'm Father Lang of the Order of Dancing Monks. Nice to meet you. Look, is this going to take very long? I've got an important matter to attend to on behalf of His Majesty. I understand you are the head of the new House of Healing, and, and as such, I wonder if you might have a place for a young man who shows great potential as a surgeon. A surgeon? Yes. Permit me to introduce Brother Magnus. Are you at W-I-T-C-H? Magnus, this is Miss Alba Salix, the royal physician. Royal physician? I come from a position of uh, privilege and patriarchy, and I'm not, I'm not sure how to feel about this. An apprentice? This kid? I'm not a kid. I'm 17, and I know how to break dance. I can't say that he sounds of much use to anyone, let alone me. He does have some skill, and... Uh, He's got a, a great potential. I don't need any assistance. You heard the W-I-T-C-H. I certainly don't need him. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have got some herbs to gather. Gunther, yes, Barabelle. Did Alba get rid of... No, dear, she's working on it. Though I may as well give in and get Crankle in here to have a look. You said you weren't going to ask him. Well, what choice do I have? Well, maybe I can help. What do you propose to do, dear? Well, you know that I have mystical powers, too. Ooh, yes. I am Alba's sister, remember? Do you know any yarn removal spells? Well, not spells. I haven't studied the way Alba has, of course, but if I concentrate and picture you in my mind without the yarn, yes, and then if I kiss you, Ooh, you'll have to come a bit closer, my dear. Mm-hmm, yeah, smoochy, smoochy, smoochy. Anything? Not yet. Huh. Kissing always works. Perhaps if you kiss each string of yarn separately. Mm hmm Go ahead. Well, it may, may tickle my lips. Uh, you, it, like, I don't know, the feel of yarn against my lips is not something that appeals to me. Please, please, my dear. All right, here we go. It's, uh, no, 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 it's not going to work. You better summon Crankle. Good morning, Meadow. Good day. You're the loveliest Meadow of all, I dare say. Hello, Mr. Hedgehog. Hello, bumblebees. Hello, daisies and blackbirds and sycamore trees. Oh, what's that sound? Uh, Snakeweed. Why can't I find any snakeweed? Swallowtail, butterflies, grasshoppers, too. Oh, oof, we just bumped into one another. Oh, wh why don't you look where you're going? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry I didn't see you there. Why don't you watch where you're flying? Here, let me help you with your basket. My name's Holly, by the way. Silly fairies. I said I was sorry. Yeesh. Look, I can manage my basket just fine. Oh, choke cherries. Are you making a liver tonic? No. 
a poultice? No. A charm against losing things absentmindedly? No, it's for removing yarn from someone's... Who in the heck are you anyway? Yarn? Oh, a choke cherry doesn't remove yarn. It's just an old wives' tale. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean it like that, like being that you're, you know, uh, uh, an old wife. Well, I, d I didn't mean it like that. Well, I'm neither. I'm neither. Thank you very much. Now, excuse me. All right, well, see you later. You know, you know uh, what's better for removing yarn is uh, silver bark. Did I ask? It just seemed like the best way to help you out, you know, to make amends for bumping into you and calling you an old wife. That's very kind, but I don't need your help. Fine. But really, you should try the silver bark. It's, it, there's a stand of it right over there. All the books I've read say choke cherry. Well, who are you going to believe, a bunch of books or an expert herbalist? Or an herbalist? You know, I may be a herbalist or I may be an herbalist. Expert? You can't even fly straight. Well, that's just probably the uh, rainbow cap angel mushrooms I was trying earlier, <laughs> you know? Oh, boy. Have you seen a purple hedgehog? Because I was just, I just was, it was telling the funniest jokes earlier. They totally throw me off. I was chasing it around and, uh, I think it said it, it had, it had some snacks hidden. Have you seen any snacks hidden anywhere, Alba? I really should get a map or something. I'm just totally lost. Uh huh. It's it's a it actually is a research project. It has value. It's uh it, I don't know if you're ever, you're familiar with the studies they've been doing, but personally, I'm working my way through the native fungi of Floria to find out their effects on fairy physiology, which is very hard to say except for me. Fairy physiology. You could even say I'm fairly fluent on fairy physiology, if you would like to say that uh, over and over again quickly. But I'll say it slowly again. I'm, I was thinking, trying to think of another word that meant studying. But I'm fairly fluent in fairy physiology. And suddenly, all is explained. Can I at least uh, carry your basket or something? No, thank you. Please, I, I, I really need to do a good deed to set things right. It's what we fairies do. Here, let me... No. No, do not touch my, this is my favorite basket. Do not touch my favorite basket. It's nothing. It's really nothing. I, I, here, let me help. I'll just pull it really hard. Re oh, no. Is this a wicker basket? Because that sounds like the sound of wicker cracking in half. And everything's spilling out of your basket. And uh, also those bottles of tinctures are shattering on the ground there. Sorry about that. Oh, you silly fairies. The Sorcerer General and his executive assistant to see you, Majesty. Ah, Crankle, your Majesty. Do you know anything about removing this yarn, uh, perhaps, uh, from someone's head? Yarn on someone's head, your Majesty? Uh, n n yeah, on my head. I got yarn on my head. Look at this. Oh, dear. And how did this come about? Let me guess. Perhaps it was that physician of yours with all her science. Uh, it was supposed to be a hair tonic. Oh, dear me. How terrible. Is there anything you could do? Yeah, it's a tricky business, this. Do you have any more of the tonic, so-called? Alba took the rest of the bottle. Hmm, without being able to perform an analysis on this preparation, I will require more time to formulate a suitable remedy. I hope you're enjoying yourself, Crankle. Not at all, Majesty. But I did warn you, if I recall. Yes, yes, stop touching my yarn. With respect, Majesty, it is a consequence of allowing, if I may be so bold, a self-taught hedge, W-I-T-C-H, to minister to the health of yourself and the kingdom at large. Thank you, Mr. Crankle. Dr. Crankle, just look for a remedy, please. Of course, Majesty. Back bubbling here. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Let me stir this here. Tap my... Sp I, I, oh. That fairy really got under my skin, but tapping this spoon against my cauldron really relaxes me. Now, where was I? Two parts tincture of rosehip to three parts dragon scale oil. Reduce the heat. Add three cups of cow parsnip. Ugh. 
Durant. Oh, and somebody's opening my door. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry, I wronged you, Miss Alba Salix, and now I must... What are you doing in my pantry? I must do three good deeds for you to set things right. Look, I brought you a new basket. How did you get in? Um, through the window? Oh, gods. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, by the way. I think I, the latch, I may, I'm not a latch expert. I'm sorry about that, too. And then there was the glass. I sl- slept up the glass, too. But I could put, like, a board over it or something till we figure it out. Do you know anybody? Do you know any glazier? Is it a glazier or a glazier? How come they're just not called glassers? Do you ever, do you know that? It's with a Z, I believe they spell it. You broke my window? Well, broke is such a strong word. I, 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 I cleaned out the, the old glass uh, to prepare it for the new. I'm sorry, I'll fix it. Uh, okay, so now I owe you four good deeds plus a window. But look, I've been sorting everything in your pantry and putting it in order. You'll be so happy. It's so organized. Look over here. You've been... Oh, great Ivar, what have you done? I had everything in here organized by the condo method. The condo method? That must mean something different in your world, because this was a great great big jumble, a big mess in the air. How could you find anything? I didn't even know how you knew where... where, 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 where it was very, very... This was strongly in need of reorganization. There's a system... The condo method to me means things go where they go, and then I know where to find them. I had a system that worked, and now I've got about two minutes to come up with a potion for the king. Oh, I need to find some cow parsnip. These aren't even in alphabetical order. No, 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 no. Alphabetical doesn't make any sense. Not for organizing herbs or tinctures or pungents or unguents or salves or potions. Tonics, you, why would you put those in alphabetical order? I mean, if you're looking for cow parsnip, it's under C for, would it be under C for cow or P for parsnip or H for Heracleum? It does, you're so confusing, this condo method. You tell me. Look, I've organized them all by their Glade Miles herbal catalog number. So much easier. Oh, God, help me. Are you going to run through all this right now when I'm in the middle of making something for the king? There's the 800s, which uh, is everything with a hollow stem. Here's your hemlock, your fennel, your parsley. And look, cow parsnip. Do you want the greens or the flowers? Now, you can also see, before before you get carried away, I'll bet there's giant hogweed over here, uh, which be careful, you know, keep it at its distance, you know. Uh, spotted cow's bane, water drop wart. My favorite is donkey rhubarb. It makes, Alba, if you ever need to laugh, you just say donkey rhubarb. It is my favorite rhubarb. Uh, cheerful chevrel. Che- I always have trouble saying that. It's che- chevrel, I think. It's che- cheerful chevrel. Cheerful. It's funny that I could say other things, but then I have trouble saying cheerful chevrel, uh, Alba. Uh, dog celery. You, you know, there, do you, Alba, have you ever known a dog named Celery? Would you, do you think you would call a dog named, would you call a dog Celery? Or would you give, do, do you know dogs can eat Celery? You seem speechless, Alba. Then there's fennel carrot. Uh, I, I used to have a dog that ate fennel carrot all the time. Well, it wasn't actually, it was a dog that I would fly around. Uh, it would chase me. We had so much fun. I wish that dog was named Celery. Then there's Big Bad Bamboo, uh, really the softest bamboo. I don't know who named it. It's the so- of all the bamboos. It's the softest. It, you know, it's the best. It's the best bamboo, not for the frame of the bed, and not for your bed itself. If you're ever looking, you know. I mean, this is just in a jar here, Al. But this is not for sleeping. But if you were going to build a bed of bamboo, your middle layer could be Big Bam Bad Bamboo. Uh, there's Gordian Knotweed. Still, I still don't understand anything about it. I always, uh, they always, there's entire classes on uh, the Gordian knotweed, and none of it, it's it's beyond me. They, they think that's what a, I thought I would take those rainbow mushrooms one time and I would understand the whole like purpose of Gordian knotweed, but it's here in the 800s if you need it. Uh, there's creeping coriander, 
it, it, it actually grows horizontally. So remember, it creeps, or, or, creeping coriander creeps horizontally. Uh, the bul bulbous goat millet, uh, don't get that mess mixed up with a goat mullet, Alba. That's an, you're not laughing at anything I say. I mean, look at how organized this is. This one is Diablo May Caraway. Uh, great in bread, but a little bit spicy. That's why it's a Diablo May Caraway. Kiwi can, can, kiwi can, kiwi can, quinoa. That is a, that's another hard one to say. But would you like to say kiwi quinoa? No, I would not. Kiwi can, kiwi can, quinoa. I don't know why that's so hard to say. Kiwi, quinoa. Kiwi quinoa. I don't know. Maybe it was only hard that one time, Al, but what do you think? I think I need to get back to work. Then there's Benjamin Buckwheat, who I, uh, I I would imagine was like the kid that always copied off your paper. Have you, was that your first love, Benjamin Buckwheat? Alba, is Benjamin Buckwheat the one? Remember that tale? I, I used to fly by one of the human schools uh, where they would teach you. And I know when the kids were just small, you know, still bigger than, than me, but very small. Uh, for all of you, they told the tale of Benjamin Buckwheat. He was the uh, it was he was the boy who became a grain of wheat that went from uh, ready to harvest wheat to in reverse to shrink back down uh, into a little baby. You know, whatever that was how they taught. Like uh, that was in the uh, the basic uh, planting classes or whatever you call it, aragogargology. Where they would teach you, are you f about finished uh, with your your talking? Well, not quite. I was telling you the story about the. Is do you remember learning about Benjamin Buckwheat? It's actually a thing right here. I have it organized for you now. Benjamin Buckwheat, right here in the eight hundreds. Do you remember what the eight hundreds are, Alba? Uh, I'm about to hollow something out. Ho I'm about to hollow out a holly, if you know what I mean. Oh, Alba, you're so silly. I'm so, so, so great, happy that we, we finally got to know one another, that we ran into one another. Now you know all your 800s, and I get to help you. It's really turning out to be a wonderful day, isn't it? Uh, it's not. It's, 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 I, I would not use the word wonderful for how this day is turning out, Hallie, no. Okay, so anyway, back to what we were talking about. So that's the 800s in the Glade Miles uh, Herbal Catalog number system I have here. Everything set up here for you. Just give me the cow parsnip, please. There you go. You're welcome. And please put my shelves back the way they were. But I have to do a good deed so that we can... Here's your good deed. Put everything back the way it was and get out of my pantry. Jeez, okay, okay, holy moly. If there's one thing I don't need, it's more help. And please, close, oh my gosh, the door's opening. Alba, for heaven's sake, it's your king. I've got a half hour before I have to be back for that dancing monk show, so get to work. There you are, Gunther. I was just uh, finishing up the mixture. Here, drink this. And Gunther, take your uh, towel off uh, so we could see your, your your head of yarn. Oh, this is uh, this is delicious. Uh, thank heavens. How long is it going to take for this yarn to get off my head? It should be instantaneous. You know, well, I'm still feeling the yarn. Is there a particular instance you had in mind? Because I can't go to watch dan break dancing monks with a head of yarn in front of all my people. You know, they won't be saying. Your grace, they'll be saying, what in the heck's wrong with your grace's head? Uh, just give it a minute. Uh, I'm not feeling anything, Alba. Hey, Alba, what should I do with your pumpkin extract? Oh, hey, you kind of look like the king, except you have a head of yarn, a little bit like that uh, raggedy uh, Anne of Green Gables. I am the king. Well, I love the yarn. It looks great on you. You make the yarn... The yarn makes you, you make the yarn. Oh, my, as the king, I'm speechless. And Alba, the yarn is still on my head. No. Oh, sure. What the fork? They're not shifting. Alba, I, I told you, Alba, it's a silver bark. Well, I don't have any. 
Not to worry. I brought some from the meadow. Here you go. You could choppity choppity chop it clinkity clinkity clink right here in the cauldron in the mortal mortaling and I'm pestling right all the right by my side. And then you grind it up, you squeeze out the juice into one cup of pear cider vinegar. Who is this person, Albeja King? I demand an answer. Her name's Holly. She's, uh, uh, she's helping out. You trust her? She's an expert herbalist, uh, so she claims. Sizzle, 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 fizzle, 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 and uh, just a little more bubble, bubble, bubble. No toil, no trouble. Dash and nutmeg, and here we go. Hmm, this one isn't actually that bad. Oh, boy, I feel the yarn already falling off my head. The silent sound of yarn falling off someone's head silently to the floor. But as the yarn silently falls, it turns to feathers. Oh, here, shake your head off, my king. It, it'll make it faster. No, 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 shake your head. Your, your yarn's turning to feathers. They're getting all over my place. Take your yarn in your head and the feathers outside. You see, Alba, it's the oil in the silver bark. It helps uh, the yarn turn into feathers. Uh, and then they pop out and they float away. Right off the king's beautiful head. Uh, dear me, I've never been so glad to be bald. Bye, 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 yarny yarns. Uh, see you later. Great, my entire place is covered in feathers. Uh, that's the last of the yarn. Thank heavens, I gotta get back to the palace. Thanks, you. Thank you. Uh, Holly, was it? Uh, anytime, your majesty. Alba, I do hope you're keeping her on. No, I'm holding out for someone even more annoying. Uh, Your Majesty, close the door on the way. Uh, what did I tell you? It was a choke chair. It was just a delayed reaction. Was that a good deed or what? Holy holly! I just, uh, I just put the fair. I just put it. I just did. I did one good deed for you, Alba. And now I have about 35 pounds of feathers all over my office. Oh, right. I could help with that. You know, uh, here's the thing. These, so these are, are these, if we made pillows from these feathers, would they be royal pillows? Do these feathers, uh, are they regal? Could you, could we sell them or something? Or do, do you think that they have a right to the throne? Because they, remember those tales about the, uh, Alba? You're just staring at me blankly. It looks like there's steam coming off the top of your head. I was going to ask you, do you remember that myth they taught the humans about the one? It was I don't remember. It was like one of your one of your uh, demi gods or goddesses, and then everybody jumped out of the god or goddess's belly, and so they were gods and goddesses, right? So are these feathers uh, future queens and kings? I don't care. Clean up the feathers and get them out of here. Hello, Feather Pew. Hello, Feathers. I'm going to call you. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll take each one of you. I'll make you into pillows. And I'll call you. I don't know. Oh, you are fancy royal feathers. Oh, boy. I am excited to make pillows from all of you. And I'm going to put a pillow right on Alba's sofa uh, with all of you. You'll be so excited to spend more time with her. Holly. Get the basket and clean up the feathers. Right away, ma'am. Your Royal Majesties, ladies and gentlemen, we present from the far western regions the dancing monks of the Order of Teddy Bear Mountain. Okay, uh, give me one, two, one, two, three, four. Here we go to the left, here we go to the right. Tappity, tappity, swooshity, swoosh. Impressive, aren't they? Hmm, I like that one. Parabelle, you had your belly dancers last week. You insisted they wear robes. Look, what do you call that? It's traditional garb. It looks drafty. How can they dance in that without getting cold? Oh, that's rich, coming from Mr. Oh, the Sultan of Sylvangard has a harem. Why can't I? I didn't say that. Oh, yes, you did. Well, I didn't say it like that. Your Majesties. Crankle, what are you doing here? 
I've found a remedy for the 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 the, the yawn that's been plaguing your royal scout. Where, 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 where'd your yawn go, your majesty? Alba took care of them. Did she? Well, she and her fairy. Which fairy would this be? If you please, Mr. Crankle. Dr. Crankle. The show is about to start and you're being most distracting. Indeed. Yes, my apologies, Majesty. Good evening to you both. A fairy, eh? And a one, two, a one, two, swish, swish, swish. And the back walk and whip and pop and lock and jazz hands and bow. Your Majesties, I thank you for the applause. We humbly offer you the golden sunflower, pop and lock, windmill technique, demonstrated by Brother Co and Brother Fang. Clap, 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 and a one, cloppity clop, and a two, cloppity clop, and a three, cloppity clop. Oh, that looks dangerous. Nonsense. This is just dancing, my dear. They're just dancing. Just because it's called break dancing, it doesn't have to do with breaking anything. And a whoosh, whoosh, whooshity whoosh. On the other hand, and a swoosh, swoosh, smooshity smoosh. Smoosh, 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 and a whoop, whoop, whoop. Hello, everybody. I'm about to do a pop and lock just for you. I'm trying to rhyme. I'm trying to dance on time. My name is Magnus. Just a bit of your time, and I won't whine. As a break dance in, from the school of Alfonso Ribeiro. Who on earth is that? That boy is dancing out of control. His legs are moving so fast, I don't think he can even control them. Brother Magnus, what are you doing? Your Majesties, I apologize. This is not part of our normal breakdancing routine. Magnus, get off the stage. Okay, watch this and that. I'm dancing. P-H-A-T spells fat, and that's what I'm doing. A spiral move, I'm swimming around, don't give you the blues. My name is M to the A to the G to the N to the U to the S, and I'm moving uh, so well, takes away your stress. Magnus, don't dance near the tent poles. I'm going to do a backflip, and I'm going to jump off this pole, too. I'm going to spin around. And I'm dancing for you. The queen here, shouldn't we call the guards in? My dearest king, I believe the dancing monks should be able to handle it. He's one of theirs, after all. Not a very good one. And here we go, a pop and lock and a spin around. I'm off the clock. Magnus, do not swing around on that pole. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 I'm st- holy cow. Uh, Father Lang, I'm going faster and faster. I've lost control. Magnus? Oh my gosh, this queen, I've never seen anything like this. As king, I do declare this is, uh, this. Is, oh, he, he's uh, pulling down the tent, and he skinned his knees, so that's going to need to be, you know, he's going to need his knees to be, uh, like, uh, like, uh, retreated or something. What are we to do? Way to go, Magnus. Oh, my goodness, even as queen, I've never seen such a skinned knees before in all my days. Oh, no, I skinned both my knees, and I'm still spinning on the pole, and the tent's coming down. Brothers, Father Lang, are you all right? It's the rest of our cr- dance crew. W- what ha- What happened? Find the right place to stand. My dancing monk brothers, this is Father Lang telling you, if you find the right place to stand, even a dancing fool and the troubles they bring will pass you by. I'm fine too, by the way, Father Lang. Your majesties, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a short break in our dancing performance. I'm telling you, it makes perfect sense. It's all in the book. It would help if either of us had this book. What's next? Purple coneflower? It's in the 900s. No, wait, rats. It should be here between sunflower and ragweed. Never mind, I'll go get some from the garden. I know it's here somewhere. Thank you for your help. I can sweep the rooms too. Organize your office? No. But I haven't made amends properly yet. We'll call it even.
No, 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 that's not how it works. On my honor, as a good fairy, I have solemnly... Oh, your door. Set him down here as the leader of the mon dancing monks, Miss Salix. Uh, yes, what's happened? A boy has uh, overdanced and spun himself around and skinned his knees. Oh, dear. One of yours? Hey, Doc. Uh, it's you. He ran out during the performance, spun around on a pole, lost control, brought the tent down, and skinned his knees. Least he could have done is finish the job. Holly, what can I do? I need fresh knee wart, uh, lots of it's coming up. Miss Salix, I would entrust young Magnus to your care. What for? I'll, I'll bandage up his knees and he can be on his merry way tomorrow. Uh, he's, uh, he's not a very good dancer, one. And he's in the skinned knees will prevent him from, we're, we're learning an, we're going to do a new knee dancing routine soon. And we also have to get out of town early. So, oh, the king didn't appreciate the impromptu renovations, did he? He was tough but fair. Here's the knee wart. Oh, this poor young person, skinned knees. I'm not a young person. I'm 17, thank you. Uh, we got to wash your knees with soap and water. It's actually going to mildly sting. Wait a second. This isn't what I learned from uh, the patriarchy, that women and fairies were cleaning up and helping. I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, hey, that's not very nice. I'm here to help you. Magnus, hold still. This is going to mildly sting as I wash your knees. Uh, and then put chlor whatever that hydrogen, you know, our version of what some would call peroxide of per hydro hydrogen peroxide. Oh, my, my, that does barely mildly sting. And as a child, I would not be comfortable with it. Well, I know you don't trust our judgment, Magnus. You're just a big splainer that knows everything. Holy juniper, those are some skinned knees. You'll never dance again today or probably tomorrow. Oh, wow, that does uh, sting, but it feels good that uh, that my knees are, you know, that... Uh, could you put something on my knees, though, that's like a Band-Aid or like a puffy or something? Yeah, we'll put uh, some puffy bandages on your knees. Don't worry. Uh, it's, it's I, uh, Alba, the head of the dance crew. I was just wondering if you'd given any more thought to taking on young Magnus as an apprentice. Are you serious? Look at the damage he did in one night. I think of it this way. He's young. He's not that bright, uh, but he has great interest in uh, dark magic. I understand you have some experience in that as well. Who told you that? Magnus needs a guiding hand like yours to set him on the right course. You want me to teach him dark magic? No, I mean, you, 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 you've you made the uh, uh, journey to the darkest places of the soul, and then you could come back to the light. Uh, you know, life's not all or nothing, Elba. I know you know that. I'm not interested. I'll fix the kid up, sure, in his knees. But his karma, that's your problem. Miss Salix, I hope you'll reconsider. Alba, you're going to have to, uh, like, I, I don't know, I'm tired of dealing with this kid. You'll have to finish up his knees. Great. Why don't you have Threadstrong brand uh, Band-Aids? Uh, stitch and time are far better. Not on my knees. I only take, uh, th those are the ones, I want the ones with the, the orange on the inside and possibly some sort of hero printed on the front. Uh, these are D-series Band-Aids. Uh, they're double enchanted to prevent uh, anything and everything and to make you feel good. They just happen to be hot pink. It's not my problem. I'm telling you, Threadstrong's the way to go. I don't know what you know about putting bandages on knees, but I know what I know about it. You want Threadstrong? Fine. But don't blame me when you're, you, 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 oh boy, you're making me, your knees are going to heal a lot faster, you dance a lot sooner if you trust me, kid. No, I'd prefer just you listen to me as I explain it to you. Uh, I know who's the physician here and who's the expert in physicianing, Alba. Oh boy. Hold still. 
How'd you get this job anyway? What makes you qualified to be the royal physician? Are you like friends with the queen or something? Uh, I'm her sister, actually. Oh, that explains it once again. Wait a second. You're the queen's sister? Uh, quick on the uptake. That's just what I just said two seconds ago. Wait a second. That means it was you. You tr you were going to marry the king. Isn't that what happened? Three sisters uh, saved the king. The youngest actually cured him and married him. There's a lot of different stories out there. So does that mean you failed or the king preferred your sister to you? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What, what is that you're putting on my knee now? Uh, you should lay still and not talk while I'm scrubbing your knee. Oh, I guess I uh, said so. I guess I said something you couldn't handle, huh, Alba? Oh yeah. Hey, is that what uh, Brother Lang meant about the dark places of the soul? Who said that? Uh, Father Lang. He said that you know dark magic. He was just trying to trick me into taking you in. I bet you do. Hey, show me a trick. Like, uh, do some magic on something. No. Please give it up. Lang, tell your young monk here I don't do dark magic. Father Lang, he snuck out. Oh, these monks, you're worse than the fairies. I know, huh? Alba? Yes, Magnus. Are you like uh, one of those, uh, what are they called? Like Sith Lordesses or something? You don't want to know. Yeah, I do. No, you really don't. Come on, you could tell me everything. I'm, I'm like, a, I'm a dancing monk, or I was almost a dancing monk. Hey, where are you going? You haven't finished up. I, I still have one knee that needs a Band-Aid on it. Good. Keep it up. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Alba? Here I am in Alba's uh, pantry, just uh, Holly the fairy. Oh, hey, Alba, can I get you anything? No, I'm fine. Sorry about ducking out. I just skinned knees. They just, uh, I needed some tea. And I just wanted to calm down. I think I used the last year chamomile, but I can go get you some more. Mm-hmm. What are you looking for? Found it. Thanks. Alba, that's not wild carrot, by the way. It's a uh, hemlock. You know, the, the, the famous kind of hemlock uh, that uh, all those philosophers made famous, I think, or some playwright that made famous. I know what I'm doing, Holly. Elba, what are you doing? Just taking care of my patients. You're not going to... I mean, he's annoying and like a splainer, but he's just a kid. He's not even a mansplainer yet. He's a kid splainer. Holly, I've got motive, means, and opportunity. The monks all got it. The monks are gone. They danced out of town. Who cares? Uh, this kid... Uh, we got to nip the splaining in the butt, if you know what I mean, or in the bud. Alba, I can't let you do this. Get out of my way, fairy. Alba, I thought you were nice. Huh. Or at least I thought you were a good witch, but you're... Yes? I don't know. Alba, are you... Are you, like, uh, you, you like do, uh, not all or nothing? You have morals and you decide on, based on your moral compass in the moment? Yes, yes, I, uh, I, I have a belief system and sometimes I make good choices and sometimes I make bad choices, Holly. I'm not perfect. I'm just a human being. Well, thank the twinkly stars for that. Now, get out of my way. I gotta go put a band-aid on that other skinned knee. Elba? And the hemlock over. Oh, thank you, Alba. As king, I call this court to order. Will the defendant please stand? Yo, I'm pushing my chair back and I'm standing up. Brother Magnus of Hesselford, late of the dancing, dr dan former dancing, break dancing monk, this court finds you guilty of terrible dancing, pole dancing on a royal pole, holding up a royal tent, causing a disturbance, making a mess of the new curtains, and skinning your knees on royal property. I object, your kingship. Don't get smart with me. I, Gunther III, King of Floria, do sentence you to 5,000 hours of community service. What? Did I say 5,000? I meant 6,000. What in the... 
Holy shirt balls. To be served at the House of Healing under the care of Miss Alba Salix, royal physician. What? Well, hey. In the hopes that she will be a good influence on your character and keep you out of trouble. Gunther, what are you thinking? Court is dismissed. Alba, I'm counting on you. Gunther, wait. Hey there, boss. Hello, Magnus. You ready to rock? Fine. Let's get back to the House of Healing. Sweet. You could give me my first lesson in black magic. All right, all right. Have you ever tried hemlock? No. Is it good? Do, 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 do. I can't sing. I just remembered. This is the ending credits of the show. Good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that reviewed the show recently on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Terry and Julianne said, very good app. Uh, I guess we're worries out of you, and that's why it's great. Uh, uh, Ioder20 said, I goik. Uh, why couldn't I find the mystery bird? Because he's a mystery. Uh, Mallory with lots of Z's, uh, so helpful. I heard about this podcast from George and Karen. I'm so glad I listened to the recommendation. The app has been incredible. Consistently helping me fall asleep when I need it the most. Like another reviewer said, like having a trusted friend promising to stay awake till you fall asleep. Uh, so comforting even if it ends up being a sleepless night. A certain age uh, wrote, uh, Mr. Rogers from Somniacs. Oh, this is an update. I'm now more than ever grateful to have this calming, compassionate, nighttime companion. A thousand thanks for helping us. Uh, weirdly good. That comes from Xena658 from the UK. Uh, ultra, you know, it's not easy. Uh, they work for, they work uh, helping other people. And obviously it's a trouble, hard, not easy to switch down. Uh, a lot of what ifs, uh, and they said they were really tired and they uh, needed something. Strange ramblings, but I found myself thinking, did he just say that? And focusing on his words, and then the next minute falling asleep. Uh, woke up and put this on. It works. It's different, but it works. Uh, Steph from Australia said, put me right to sleep. It did take a few tries to get used to it, but Scooter puts me to sleep so quickly, usually wide awake, but this podcast takes me out of my own thoughts. Uh, Tansy from Canada says, been listening all night, uh, at night for about three months, signed up as a Patreon, and t- I've been taking uh, self-care mini scooter breaks throughout the day. Nice place for my brain to hang out in. Uh, Mar- M- M- Marge uh, says, uh, helping me get through tough times, use this podcast to fall asleep, but the last few weeks uh, I've been listening to it all night, every night. Uh, Tonka says uh, they wanted all night. Uh, just say to the wishes it was uh, they didn't like they don't like the introductions, uh, and they want all night capabilities, uh, and uh, I guess and all that for free too. So that's uh, Tonka Blue, uh, and then uh, Chi G B says, uh, helping me through kind service, especially right now. Thank you. And Kimmy Cricket, who dreamy way to fall asleep, uh, hesitant at first, has been helping me fall into a deep sleep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show. You can do that on Apple Podcasts and a few other apps. Oh, wait, there's other. Let me see if there's any other new ones. Uh, uh, no, there's no one. So, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for everybody for reviewing the show. Sleep with Me exists as a free podcast uh, because if you'll support the show directly on Patreon or our sponsors or our merch, uh, that's literally how we're able to get it to you for free twice a week. And then we grow as a show by people sharing the word. So thank you for everybody do- that does that. And uh, speaking of spreading the word, here's another podcast I wanted you to know about. Hey, if you listen to this episode, a podcast I want you to know about is Alba Salix. Uh, she, she's a royal physician. And, you know, there's, I don't know, there's few things in life I love more than uh, Holly, Magnus, and Alba's relationship uh, currently. Uh, my daughter and I were just listening to episode two. So if you listen to this episode, now go over to Alba Salix feed, either using the link in the show notes or by opening your podcast app and typing in ALBA. 
space, S-A-L-I-X, and then hit subscribe. Go back to episode one and listen, and let me know what you think. Uh, thanks, and good night. All right, everybody, Scoots here. I'm doing our month in review uh, on Sleep With Me Plus, uh, which is similar if you still listen on Patreon, if you could think about moving over, but it's going to be similar to, to what uh, you you would have seen there this month. And as far as the ad-free episodes, a lot of them are coming out in the um, ad-supported feed that you, you all listen to as well. Um, I got to find my, the right podcast app. Uh, so I was also buying time because, uh, okay. So like, uh, so on sleep with me plus one of the main differences, everything is separated out into uh, its own feeds. Uh, so there's four different podcasts. I'm going to start with the bonus episode podcast. So it just has bonus shows. Uh, and on March 2nd, um, a mayor tour, Welcome to Scooterville, a posty special edition super deluxe episode came out. These are really cool. They come out on uh, a couple Saturdays a month. And these are uh, something that's just really important, been really important to me. Um, ideally, down the road, we'll have budget to do more or somebody else even do a version two. But it's basically Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Ear- Ear- Earful. Uh, it takes an episode of Sleep With Me and reimagines it uh, in a sense. Uh, it, which that's pretty much it. Like, uh, that's all the instructions for Chris. Hey, take an episode, reimagine it. But this year, Chris has been doing this for years. So in the bonus feed, it's years and years and years of this. As a matter of fact, in the bonus feed, I'm looking at there's 377 episodes. I think that's in the uh, Boar Besties feed. But uh, so right now in 2020... Four is that what year it is? Chris is doing um this uh, Scooterville series, so definitely worth checking out if you're like love sleeping me. You're looking for something like a little bit different with some sound design. You want to listen to it during the day, or a lot of people <laughs> when they start to support the show and they discover these, this is what they sleep to because everybody's a little bit different. Uh, what else we got in this feed? Uh, audio news, uh, Scooterville. Oh, contact. Uh, um, TNG Contact Part 2 came out since I think we last recorded this. And then a Fearless Flyer episode is about to come out. I think it may be this week, um, the February Fearless Flyer episode. Okay, then Boar Besties and Boar Friends get also get a feed with all intro and all night shows. So Thursday night, an all intro episode came out. A oh, weird, the all, uh, the, uh, the all night episode, um, I might have archived it, uh, but Big Farm in the Sky PI, huh, I guess uh, the, there's an all-night episode that's going to come out or should be in the feed that is, so, so doesn't seem to be there. So this is good. I'm checking this. This is live quality control. Maybe it's in another feed. I put it in the wrong feed. But yeah, um, not sure which one it is either. So I'll have to look into that. So that's interesting. Okay, then lo- then you get a, a, a feed with uh, ad-free full episodes. And, uh, so they don't have any, um, they have, uh, they don't have the, uh, supporter zone. They don't have the sponsor stuff. They don't have, um, the, uh, mystery barred music or the thank yous at the end, but they are something that, uh, um, cause you can listen to that in the ad supported version. Right. But, um, so let's see, episode 12, 12, 1245 came out Sunday. That was Great British Bake Off episode eight. Multiplex episode three came out. Hickory Dickory Farms, uh, Ren Fair with Ray came out March 3rd, 1243, 1242 Bake Off, episode 7 came out, February 25th, uh, Multiplex, episode 2 came out, Julius J. Juice, um, what else we got, uh, uh, 1240, Apple Cider Redo, that was Trader Joe's a Shop and Cook episode, big retraction in that one, you know, it retracted my opinion on Apple Cider Donuts from Trader Joe's. So, yeah, and then the audio news. And then in story only, we had, uh, uh, C12, the same thing. Uh, everything comes out on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're, this is so cool. There's something we only have been able to do since we moved to a new platform is we're able to put out the story only episodes and the, all, the, 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 the full episodes on the same day because they're in separate podcasts. We couldn't do that on the old platform because everything would just been too clogged up and it would just been too confusing for a large number of people. So now, yeah, story only, there's like a lot of story only fans and yeah, they got the same thing. Uh, Great British Bake Off 8, Multiplex 3, Run Fair with Ray, Great British 7, Multiplex 2, 
Trader Joe's Shop and Cook, Apple Cider, uh, then uh, Dessert Week, uh, Great British Bake Off, whatever, whatever, Episode 6, Multiplex 1, uh, Wandering Towers, Board Game Unboxing. So yeah, it's everything that came out this week. Uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me. We've been working, I've been re- working really hard at the planning calendar and we got some exciting stuff coming up to sleep to. That's so exciting. You don't need to listen to it. Uh, what do we have? Multiplex 7 I recorded yesterday. Started writing Multiplex 8 today. Uh, these are these are a couple months away, but the Guild, the web series of the Guild, uh, we did the uh, part of season one of that. And we're definitely going to do season one of that that and probably season two maybe go on i don't know maybe maybe do season one and season two and take a break those will be coming out uh, late spring early summer um i came up with two new ideas uh for uh random tuesday episodes one with pillow like uh, other plush friends a pillow pad and then another one that um would be called the uh the marble vagabond and those were episode ideas that came out of intros. Uh, neither of those has been recorded, though. Those intros were recorded. The Marble Vagabond intro will be in b- part two of our coverage of the movie Bring It On. Uh, what else have we recorded? Uh, we did a, oh, I guess in the last month, uh, we did an episode called Wil- Wildy Wonk uh, Interactive Experience, Immersive Adventure, which I was really happy with. And that's going to be a new genre of Sleep With Me style show of like... Uh, Poorly run immersive adve- immersive experiences like the one like that kind of got a lot of press uh, and we got to do we got to work on the audio for something very similar but it was called the Wildy Wanga uh, experience uh, also not very not a very high budget experience but at least it had audio from Scoots or a narrator like Scoots so that'll come out late spring early summer. And then our our crossover series, uh, we got th- th- three episodes done, episode two, three, and four from season one. Uh, so that'll be coming out this spring, too, and summer. So, yeah, that's everything right now. And thanks so much. Uh, if you're listening to this, a free, free feed, it'd be great. Uh, if you think about supporting the show, it's sleepingwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, this enables us to do everything we do. And those of you that support the sponsors, we also really count on those of you that just spread the word about the show. So thank you for doing that. And, uh, that's it. Uh, good night, everybody.